Welcome to Victory. I want to thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. Thank you for watching the program. I'm the senior pastor at Victory in Camden and Victory in El Dorado. We have campus pastors at each one of those. And we just want to thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for letting Victory be a part of your family and a part of your life. You know, during the service today, there'll be a telephone number at the bottom of your screen. If you would take advantage of that, let us know what's going on in your life. If God is dealing with your heart, if you're rejoicing in your heart, things that we can stand with you and pray with you about, call that number at the bottom of the screen. Let's go right into that service at Victory now. Well, the Lord has a calling on all of our life. And that's what we're talking about. This series is dealing with the calling. But there's a specific calling, and it's a calling to move up. It's a calling to move higher. Now, you can sense it in your spirit. You may not be understanding what's going on. In fact, a lot of the people in this church are not, they're understand as frustration. You're not understand the thing that's being frustrated is your spirit is being frustrated with your flesh or your flesh is being frustrated with your spirit. And that's what it is. And so, and so many times then it takes on because you, you don't understand the battle of the spirit drawing you and your flesh saying no and your heart saying yes. How, whose heart is saying yes? Yeah, your heart's saying yes, see, and your, and your flesh is saying no. But because of that, then you, you don't know what's going on. And so you're looking at your neighbor and you're saying, oh, it's her fault. And they're looking at you and saying, no, it's your fault. And Lord and behold, it's God's fault. <laughs> because God is drawing us to a higher place. And some of us are just still entangled down here. And some of us are still in ropes and chains that we've got to begin to find freedom of so that we can begin to answer that call that God is doing. And so it's a calling to follow God. That's what this tremendous calling is. It's a sense of calling to follow God. Everybody say, I'm going to follow God. Now, now we've got to do some specific things. The Lord is, because following God is, is wonderful as long as you can do it on your little merry-go-round. But following God gets much more serious than that. Following God is going to take the deepest part of your life. And in the process of it, God's going to work in your life. It's the process that is exemplified to us to when Israel left Egypt. And for 40 years, they traveled to the promised land. It's the frustration, it's the frustrating time. It's the, it's the season where God's promised me and God's told me, but I hadn't got it yet. Now, this is an important time. Now, when the Bible talks about this wilderness experience, it talks about it like there's some bad things that's in that wilderness. There's some hard things, some hard times. But God has to put the wilderness experience. It has to be from the time that you receive the promise to the time that you get the promise, this wilderness has to be experienced. Because God is going to strain out of us all of that that will keep us from going into the promise receiving. All of that's still there that I want to hold on to. God is going to get rid of who I pretend to be and God's going to make it who I am. Amen. Amen. The Lord's going to deal with my life. Now, during this wilderness, God's purpose, the divine plan of the Holy Spirit is to bring me closer to God. Or somebody says, give me a Mercedes Benz and I'll get close to God. Or somebody says, give me some sports car and I'll get close to God. Or give me a jet plane. No, you usually get further from God. If you don't have a wilderness experience between the time that you receive the promise and you receive the fulfillment of that promise if you don't have a wilderness experience 
then what God gives you will produce pride and eventually you'll leave God out of it. So God has to allow this. The Lord has to allow this season, this hard season, this season that says, I don't have a thing to prove it, but I still believe God. Things are still getting bad, but I believe God. Things don't look like they're gonna work out, but I believe God. God has to allow that season because that's the season that pulls you close to God. That's the season that you get close enough to God to be able to handle the receiving of the promise. So the Lord's at work within us. God's calling us forward. Now what I pray, that it doesn't take 40 years. Or some of us will view it from heaven like Moses did. You understand? The truth of the matter is the timing is not so much, it is a God timing, but it's as much in my control as it is God's. Because during this season, is how much complaining I got in me, how much doubt I got in me, how much frustration I still got in me, how much anger I got in me. The Lord means this to be the season that strings that stuff out of me. Truly the trip physically from the, from the place that they received the promise in Egypt to the place that they received or received the promise, but that they received what the promise gave them was a two-week journey. If they could have went straight there, but they didn't know where there was. You don't know where there is either, do you? Smarty pants, you don't know where you're going. You're just trusting God's going to be good when you get there. Amen. And the process of it is, it was a two-week trip. If they would have known, they could have went there in two weeks. But they had so much garbage that had to be strained out of them. They had too much self, too much pretending, too much false, too much uh, mask wearing. They had too much of that. And God says, I know how to find out who you really are. So out there in the wilderness, they faced provision. They faced sickness. They faced discouragement. They faced fears. They faced angers. And it was God's plan all the time to get that garbage out. Garbage out, Jesus in. Garbage out, Jesus in. Garbage out, Jesus in. It was the will of God all the time to get the garbage out and to get Jesus in. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise if you believe that you're going to be one of those that make it. So the wonderful thing about it is we have a power inside of us that they didn't have when the example was given to us. When they traveled through that 40 years experience and through the 10 testings that they went through, when they traveled through that, the power was without. But guess who's got some power within? Amen. As a New Testament believer, God has made you with a power of blame. I'm going to quickly give us some scriptures, then we're going to talk about this. All right, uh, Exodus chapter 19, 5 says, But you shall be for me a kingdom of priests. That's the will of the Lord. Now, this is the Old Testament scripture. But it's always been the will of God. When you see that word priest, you just need to substitute what it means. It means a person that hears for God and shares what they hear. It's a person that hears from the Lord. A person that can walk in, in their prayer closet, in the presence of God. And they quit pretending and they're able to walk into the presence of God and able to hear from the Lord. That's where God's trying to care for one of us. Now, even in the Old Testament, that was the will of the Lord, that God wanted everybody to be able to have that relationship with him where they could come into his presence 
and literally hear from God over their life. That is the will of the Lord. There's three groups of people that are developed in this wilderness experience. The first group is those that hear God. They're listed to us as Levites, which simply means my heart is toward God. The first group, the people that hear God, Levites, the, or my heart is toward God. My heart is toward the Lord. I have a heart toward God. Unless you got a heart toward God, you're never gonna hear from God. And they were symbolized in this way. Four priests are people that would go in before the presence of God and hear God and come out and share it. They carried what the Bible called the ark of his presence on their shoulders. They led the whole way through the wilderness. The cloud of the presence of God, which symbolic goes up, that the Holy Spirit leading in our life, Every day, the cloud would move or set. When the cloud was set, nobody moved. When the cloud was set, nobody traveled. I'm gonna tell you what, you know one of the worst enemies every one of us have is that spirit of impatience. If God was going to come through, he would have already come through, some dumb person says. Not realizing that we're under obedience to the Lord and we've determined to follow him. So they would get up every day and they would look and they would see if the cloud of God's presence was moving. That's what you're expected to do, and I'm expected to do. That every day I'm expected to be in the presence of God and find out what God's doing in my life. Every day God's expecting me to do that. Because there's another group of people right behind the four people that their eyes were on God and was leading them through the wilderness, carrying the ark of his presence. Right behind them, there was a huge group of people. Three million of them. And they're the group of people that follow people that follow God. Now I'm gonna tell you, if that's where you wanna live your life, honey, you live there. You'll always be sharing somebody else's story, somebody else's miracle, somebody else that God did something for. But that's not the first plan. The first plan for you is that you be the one that's following God, that's hearing God, that's sharing what God's done for you, what God's doing in your life, and what God's speaking into your life. You can tell in five minutes what group a person is in. Let me share the third group. There's a third group of those that follow the presence of God. The third group is of people, the Bible says there's this group that gets tired and they get weary. And they're the group that says stuff like this. She didn't shake my hand. I'm not gonna sit around her anymore. Or what's that preacher say that line for? See, that's the third group. The Bible calls them weak and sickly in spirit. They're weak and they're sickly. They, they, they don't have strength to even follow people that follow God. They just kind of stumble along. And the Bible says they form a third group. And then the Bible says that's the one the enemy attacks and destroys is that third group. There was a group that would come against them. There was a fierce fighting group, enemies of God. They're called Amorites. I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of enemies of God. I'm going to tell you, your enemy is not a person. If you think it is, you're automatically in that third group. You're here. 
But if you see that the enemies of God, the enemies of God are the lies that the devil tells you. They're the discouragements that the devil tries to bring on you. They're the tries to steal your faith away. They try to tell you that God will never come through. And some of you have believed those junky lies just like they did. And it's caused you to become weak and you fall behind those that are following God. And the Bible says those are the ones the Amorites destroy. They're sitting there, these stinking Amorites, camel riders. And they're sitting there and they're just waiting for that weak group to get far enough behind where the strong group can't protect them anymore. And that weak group, they stay, they get in an area of weakness. They stay in that. I'm going to tell you what, there's not a one of us that have not been a part of that weak group at some time in our life. But I'm going to tell you what, it didn't take much of the devil nipping at my toes for me to realize I can't stay here. I'm going to run and catch up with another group that is better and stronger than this group I'm in. Amen. And so that third group. And the Amorites, the Bible says, they're fierce camel riders. And they sit there and they wait and they watch. And they watch you and they watch me to see if we're gonna get weak enough to where when they attack us, the other group can't get to us and we're too weak to stand in faith and believe God. So what you gotta do, honey, if you in that third weak group you better find you a fast donkey. <laughs> and you better catch up. You hear what I'm telling you? Now that next group, they are, there is, there is a protection over that next group. The second group I'm talking about. The group that follow people following God. And that's where most of us have spent most of our life. We follow those that have followed God. And so in that group, there is protection, but I'm gonna tell you what, the wilderness never ends. Because what God's trying to get strained out of us is the very thing that's keeping us from being close enough to follow God, to hear from God and to walk out. Listen, honey, just get tired of having other people's miracles. Just put your foot down and say, I'll pick the house of miracles myself. I'm gonna believe God for God's presence to be in my life. Amen. You come to a place to where you say, I'm going to believe for this. And then you move into that place of the person that hears from God. Like I said, you can easily tell, you can talk to somebody five minutes and find out what group they're in. If you talk to somebody in the second group, they're always talking to you about the journey. It's easy to talk, it's easy to detect in just a few minutes. You can find who's in that third group, the weak group. They're all telling you how hard the journey is, how weak it is. They, they got a load of problems. They got this many problems. And they've allowed themselves to carry the problem, which Jesus never intended us to carry our own problems. Jesus intended us to cast our care over on the Lord. Amen. So when you talk to that third group, they're always talking their problems. Honey, if you're talking your problem, you get you a fast donkey, please. Get it? Get to another group. You're in the wrong group. You're with the wrong people. You're at a place of destruction. Because when the place of separation becomes enough between you and the people that's trusting God, the devil will come in for a kill. You hear what I'm telling you? Amen. Now you can tell the second group. The second group, you can talk to them five minutes. You're gonna, the second group, they're talking about the journey. They're talking about, well, God gave us manna. He gave us manna last night. I wonder if it'll be there tonight. And that second group, they're talking about their journey. They're, well, yeah, and they say, oh, yes, I, I, I know God has taken care of me in the past. Uh, Nita, I know God's healed me in the past. I know God, but, 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 will he heal me now? See, that's a second group. 
But the first group are those that hear from God and many times on a daily basis. And they share. When you talk to them, they're saying things like, you know what? God gave me this scripture the other morning. And this scripture has been such a strength in my life. You know, when I was praying the other morning, I felt a burden in my heart. And I laid that thing on the altar of God. And when I got up, I had the peace of God ruling in my heart. You hear? You can tell that first group because the first group, their language is all based around what God is sharing with them and what they're sharing out about what God is saying. That second group, you can tell them it's all about their journey. It's all about, well, God did this, but I wonder if he'll do this again. And that third group is all about the problem. So just take a little test for yourself and just see what group you're in. And if you're in the wrong group, honey, catch up. Your life depends on it. Catch up. Catch up. Amen. So the scripture is so full about this in the area of following God. And give us the example in the Old Testament. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 33, it says, Stay on the path that the Lord God has commanded you to follow. Stay on it. Stay on the path that God pre previously put you on. I mean, I, sometimes I may go for a, a month and I only have one scripture because I found out I better stay with the last thing God told me until God tells me something again. A lot of times during this wilderness journey, God's going to speak to your heart and it just comes down to it, honey, where God says, stay on the path I put you on. I told you you could trust me. Why in the world are you doubting? I put you on the path of faith. What are you doing whining? I put you on the path of praise. What are you not praising me for? Amen. There comes a point to where when God puts us on a path, he expects a little self-discipline out of our life. About the 10th grade, uh, I quit school and uh, started drinking. Uh, started running with the wrong people. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I wanted to be with the in crowd and, and uh, drugs was, was part of that. And so my drug usage picked up. I've tried pretty much every drug there is. There was not hardly any days that, that didn't involve partying. I mean, I drank every day. That was the life that I, that I, that I lived, I, you know. It was the only life I knew. It, it was what I thought I had to do. I, I, I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be popular, you know, and that's everybody that I knew around me did drugs, drank alcohol, you know, and, and, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to fit in, so I did. I remember many times being so depressed, I would think about killing myself. I would actually go through the whole process of killing myself. I was ashamed, I was ashamed. I would think about what I had done the night before. And I say, I'm never gonna do that again, only to wake up the next morning and start again. You know, I guess the turning point for me, a friend of mine from Hot Springs had called me and said, Chris, man, you got to come to my house. We're having this, this great party, man. We want you here, you know, will you come? <laughs> well, that was the life I lived. Of course I'll be there, you know? So that night, uh, me and a, another guy got into a confrontation and a gun was pulled. He had aimed the gun right here at my heart. My friend grabbed a gun and when he did, either it went off or the boy squeezed the trigger out of reflex. Well, everybody heard the gunshot at the party. Nobody had even knew that I had been shot. I, I'm, I'm going in and out. I've done lost so much blood. I can see 
blue lights, red lights, through dim dyes. I mean, I'm just really out of it. They grabbed me and they put me in the ambulance. I was laying on the bed in the ambulance. There was nobody back there with me, but just as clear as a bell, I heard a voice. And that voice said, this is not what I want for you. You can do so much more in life. I had this peace just come over me. I, I know that was the voice of the Lord. I, I know it was. There's, there's nobody that's gonna tell me any different. Well, they finally got me to the hospital. I went through physical therapy. When I went to church, I just, I just fell, you know. The, the preacher had, had the invitation and I just crumbled at the altar. I just crumbled. I give my life to God and I know he reached down and touched me, you know, and it was like he was saying, you had to hit bottom before I could bring you out. And I knew that I had had a second chance. I, I, I knew that most drug addicts, alcoholics, when they get in the shape that I was in, they don't get that second chance. And, and that's why I want to do all I can for him. I, I love the Lord. I read my Bible every day. I study His Word every day. I tell as many people as I can about Him. Whether they want to hear it or not, I still tell them. I love the Lord. There's nothing that I wouldn't do for Him. To hear more victory testimonies of lives changed, healed, and restored, log on to www.thevictorychurch.com slash my story. I believe the Holy Spirit has touched our life today. I believe that the words that were spoken, I believe God is dealing with us. And for many of us, maybe we need to make some things right with God. Maybe there's some areas of our life that we need to surrender to Him. Let's pray. Would you pray and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my failure. And Lord, I ask you to come in my life. And Lord, right here today, I ask you, God, that you would be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call that number on the bottom of the screen. Will you call us and let us hear from you? Will you let us be a part of your support team? Let us be a part of that team that's gonna be praying with you and standing with you and believing God with you. And also on the website, let us hear of your prayer request. God bless you and I pray that this week would be the strongest week in the Lord you've ever had. Look forward to it next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abels. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.